So this week we're going to continue our refresher from what we learned in Java 1. And since we kind of only got to touch a, a little bit in it on class, I want to do a, at least a quick little refresher again on the idea that now that we're working with Java, now that we're playing with Java, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to store uh, data for later use. And that's where we get these different uh, data types. We've got uh, integers, booleans, characters. We use all of these now that we've uh, stored information in memory. We use these so that we have different degrees of what we can store. Uh, and they uh, range from our primitive types, uh, like we see here, or our object types, such as strings, which we'll get into a little bit later on today. So again, why was this important? Well, if you remember from uh, the previous videos and the lectures, uh, the World of Warcraft example where we could actually run into a buffer overflow if we have uh, too many numbers. So we do have to plan ahead. Now, in the case of the World of Warcraft video, I think you know they planned ahead well enough, uh, but 10 years down the line, it, it happens. So some of the things that we can do is now that we've started to create these uh, variables, one of the things we have to do is we have to look at all the different operators that we can use in conjunction with that. And we start with the basic operators, the ones that we've already talked about. Uh, for example, that equal sign. Uh, again, we have to think about the computer as a very dumb machine. What does the equal sign mean? You know, just think about that conceptually for a second. You know, why is it you know equals means equals? Well, if you go back, it's way back in kindergarten. You got taught somehow that that just that's what that does. It it says that this is going to equal this. These two things are equal parties. And then you learned in algebra. Well, that was where we could start to give that equal sign a little bit more. Uh, power. We gave it something known as being able to do assignments. And that continues on when we start to talk about programming. Now uh, we start to look at things in the sense that if we look at something like this equal sign here, if I put a variable, an x, on one side, what I can do on the right side is now I can apply some arbitrary value and now I've given X a value now I can do other things with that and that's where I can start to see my arithmetic operators the plus sign the minus sign those again why are those so important why do we know that the the crosshair uh, means addition why do we know that the dash means subtraction why do we know that the asterisk mean, means multiplication we did not learn that when we learned basic multiplication. We learned the good old-fashioned x. Or if you started getting into algebra, we didn't learn the asterisk uh, necessarily. You learned uh, a solid, oops, sorry, you learned a solid dot that looked something like this. And then again, when we start looking at something like division, well, we don't have uh, this symbol on our keyboard, so what can we do? We start to use uh, what we have available to us. And if we look at that slash, it looks eerily similar to our fractions. Now, this guy right here, this guy probably gave you a lot of trouble in Java 1. And this is known as the modulus, not actually the percent sign. Now, what happens here is this provides us with what's known as the remainder. If you guys remember from uh, your division classes, when you started to learn division uh, in elementary school, one of the things that you would run into is you'd have something like a remainder. So say, for example, we had the math equation 5 divided by 2. Well, 5 divided by 2, 2 is an even number, 5 is odd. What's going to happen is it would equal 2.5. But again, we hadn't learned def decimals just yet, or how to use decimals in division. So what happens is you would say that we had a 2 with a remainder of 1. The same thing actually comes into play when we start to look at modulus. We would say something like 5 
modulus 2. What we're saying is, what is the remainder that would happen if I did 5 divided by 2? What is my remainder? Well, in this case, it would be a 1.